What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers. It's a big day today. I'm recording this on Friday the 21st. I know it's the 21st because my car payment is due. And I got the reminder in the email also because Nas have been advertising on IG. I follow him heavy on IG. He'd been advertising about this upcoming project collaboration with the one and only Hit Boy, who's produced songs for Jay-Z and Kanye West. Nick is in Paris. You might be familiar with uh, some stuff from Drake, Lil Wayne, and others. I just said little. I meant Lil Wayne. And now this project seemingly coming out of nowhere with my favorite MC of all time, the goat of all goats, number one in my mind. Ever since 1994, Nasir Jones, better known as Godson, better known as Nas, has decided to bless us with this album called King's Disease. You see it right here. Know what I mean? So today we're going to do a review on this album because it's only right. It's been a long time since I did a review on anybody's album. But this one I take very personal. And so this is what we're going to do. I have not listened to the album yet. I'm shooting this on Friday, August 21st. Have not listened to anything. What I'm going to do is listen to each song one by one and come back and give you my impression. And at the end, I will give you my overall score. Might have to touch this medicine real quick, get real nice so I can get in the mood, but let's not get too relaxed because I got to bring energy for y'all's entertainment. You feel me? If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. About 60 to 70% of the people that watch my videos have not subscribed to the channel. Y'all enjoying the content, please leave the likes. That's how we grow this channel. And also subscribe to this channel, share with your people, and please let's comment in the comment section you can tell me what you feel about this project and without any further ado this is my song by song review of king's disease by nas had to get right first hold up so i just listened to the first track it's called king's disease it's the titular song on this album it sounded like classic nas to me uh introspective my notes say he's spitting knowledge on here it's classic nas i mean it's got the feel of a nas beat is reminiscent of something that's back in the early 90s um one verse touches on quite a few different topics and i like it next song up is called blue bins it's got a pretty tight beat i was not a fan of the beat switch on here then you get a little bit of talking here in the middle where there's really not a beat there going at all lyrics is pretty dope i'm gonna overall give this a six i'm gonna tell the truth first song king's disease was an eight for me this one is a six blue bins next up is called card number 85 uh this is a reminiscent joint this is one of them joints where he just kind of go back in time and reminisce about what the old days was like for him personal experiences this car 85 refers to the number of the car that he used to call whenever he wanted to go do some shit in the beginning of this uh of this song they talk about riding around with some dope and hiding it or whatever and wherever he wanted to go car 85 was gonna take him i don't know is that i'm not hip to what's going on in new york because y'all got a special delivery service where y'all go do dirt that's not like what he talk about he go to visit a girl he got to go through a whole bunch of dudes to do that song starts off nice little r&b feel to it and then you get a faint glimpse of what sounds like Charlie Wilson on here. Uncle Charlie that showed up on this album. Yes, indeed. The beat is dope as fuck. It feels like a mid 80s summertime R&B mid tempo joint for my R&B heads, for the motherfuckers that like that soulful shit. You're going to love this one. My only complaint about this song is you got Charlie Wilson on this song and you only give him an, a, a little bit of shine. We need whole choruses, bridges and breakdowns from Charlie Wilson. And let this be a lesson to everybody who I mess with in terms of doing reviews or posting your music on my IG page. Nas is my all time favorite. As a journalist, I do have to criticize where I find it necessary to do so. On this one, if I'm using Charlie Wilson, Charlie Wilson has got like a minute and a half just to itself. I'm gonna give this one an eight though. And if you listen to this album before, or if you're listening to it right now, go through and make some notes and let's see how your notes compare to my shit as we go through this album. Next song up is called Ultra Black. This was the first single they released off the album that got everybody talking about it. Quite frankly, there's not a lot I can say about this song. I gave it a 10. It's a pro-black anthem. It's a modern, classy, boom bap type of beat. It's got some pianos on it. It moves along at a great pace. The cadence on here is incredible. The lyrics are fantastic. Michael Blackson and Amon get a shout out. He talk about how black he is, ultra black in fact. Michael Blackson Black. Now that's black. 
Uh, I know it's a lot of controversy. A lot of people want to cancel Nas. Maybe I'm not hip on all the news. I was pissed at this dude for messing around with Lil Nas X. That was my beef with him. I see some other people on IG talking about, I'm not never going to fuck with this dude ever again. I don't know what Nas did. If y'all want to talk to me about that in the comment section, let's chop it up. Let's talk about it. Apparently, some people heard Ultra Black and thought it was a contradiction. Where is the contradiction? I don't know. Maybe I'm behind on shit. And don't forget, this is a song where he famously dissed Doja Cat. This is called Ultra Black. It's a 10. Next song is called 27 Summers. I guess this refers to how long Nas been in the game. The beat smacks. It's just not for Nas. Um, I'm going to have to give this one a no. It's a four. Next song up is called Replace Me. Pretty decent beat on here. Now it's getting a little bit uh, introspective. Sounds like he's talking about past relationships, maybe speaking sometimes directly to a couple of his exes, maybe some subliminal shit, I don't know. Big Sean makes an appearance on here. I don't listen to Big Sean. Maybe I should start listening to him because a lot of cats say, yo, Big Sean is this, Big Sean is that. I was never really that big of a fan. And that's without hearing a whole bunch of music from Cat. But let me say this, what Big Sean did on this album, I do not endorse. Reason being, he seemed like he phoned the shit in. When you come on a Nas album, when he give you the call, you got to go into the studio and produce something for a Nas album. You better bring your fucking A game. I was not impressed, Big Sean. So somebody tell me if I'm wrong in the comment section. Did not like this all that much. I give it a five. Next song up is called Till the War is Won. This one is a strong message to the black family, especially black women. It talks about telling black women to get away from your abuser. It talks about our black anger going back and forth with one another, ruining relationships. It talks about his own personal journey with his own parents to a small degree. The beat is very subtle and very nice. I love the track. And then all of a sudden, Lil Dirk shows up with the auto tune. When I first heard the auto tune, four, five, 10 seconds in, I'm like, nah, I'm not feeling this. As I continue to listen to to what Dirk did on here, my head started involuntarily bobbing. I didn't have no control over this shit. I actually liked it. Why is Lil Dirk on this album? I don't know, but he was effective. It's shocking for me to have to say here that Lil Dirk was more effective on this album than Big Sean. I'm gonna give this one a nine. Next song is called All Bad. This is featuring Anderson Pop. Let me tell you off rip. This one is a banger. This is not an album that's got songs on it so far as I've been going through it that you can bump in your whip at full blast riding down the street. It's not like Eminem where you definitely wouldn't be bumping that out your whip, but it's just not one of those bumping out the whip songs. This is for sitting on the couch Friday. A little bit of yak in your system, some smoke, chill. You want to think you want to be a fucking grown ass man. This one delivers. Anderson Pac, who I haven't heard a lot of music from, but I keep hearing that this dude is a talent, is a force. And he came through on this bitch. I like his singing. I like the cadence. I like the flow of it. I like the tenderness and the melody of the way he's singing. Pause. And how was it that Anderson Pac, who was allowed to shine for like a minute on this song, got more time to shine than Charlie Wilson? This is what I'm talking about. I'm not going to get hung up on that. I'm not going to nitpick. Anderson Pac, Nas, knocked it out the park on this song, All Bad, which, by the way, is a song about heartbreak and reliving again past relationships, things that maybe didn't go right. And it shows both Nas and Anderson being vulnerable on this. Not so cocky as us as men are wont to do. I'm giving this one a nine. Next one is called The Definition. When I'm hearing this song, I'm starting to realize that Hit Boy and Nas did have a certain synergy in the studio. These beats is matching up with what you would expect to hear from Nas. He has Hit Boy, I'm talking about, found Nas's zone. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the thought that went into making this project so far. This song is deep. It really talks about politics, especially politics of the elite. Talks about 330 million people being surveilled. Talks about people not believing in global warming and then takes a shot at Gail King. And you already know what the fuck that's about. Quite plain and simple, this is classic Nas. And this is why I love Nas. Again, this is for sitting at home on the couch when you got some time to think to yourself when you want to listen to that grown man shit. Another nine. This next cut is the one I had been waiting for. It's the firm reunion, minus nature, adding core mega again. I like the beat. I like what Nas did to it. You hear AZ come on and you realize that AZ need to be in the conversation for upper echelon MCs and he's not getting the credit he deserved. Wonderful thing to see AZ out here on a Nas joint. Always love Mega. He always sound like he bringing the wisdom to you and he bringing it to you in a way that's not really preachy. 
a representation of what his lifestyle is and the way he thinks and he puts that into poetry and I love Core Mega. Foxy Brown, it was great to hear her voice again. A little bit, it sounded like she was doing this rap uh, from a jail phone, uh, just a little bit. And quite honestly, I thought she could have did better. She was serviceable, but I expected more from Foxy. And before I'm done with this particular song, I have to say right here, right now, we need a firm album. Real talk. Oh, and then at the end, you hear this voice come on doing a talk, a little bit of rap. Listen, I looked at the credits. I seen Andre Young's name on it. Dr. Dre. Is that Dr. Dre at the fucking end of this cut? He didn't even produce the joint according to the credits, right? But his voice is on it. Shout to Dr. Dre. It's a decent cut. I'm going to give this one a uh, seven and a half. Next song up is called 10 Points. I like the beat on here. I like the message. I like the flow. Giving this one a seven. Oh, he also said on this song that he started saying Peace King on his song, The Flyers, and it took off like wildfire after that. Is that true? Tell me in the comment section. Next song is called The Cure, Real Talk. I just feel like they was doing too much on here. I don't know what they was going for. They are trying to elevate it beat wise. Talked about a lot of different subjects. It, it's all over the place. I gave it a five and that shit is being charitable. Last cut is called Spicy. It's a bonus track. It's got 5 e 4 on it. Did I say that right? 5 e how do you say that? I sound so fucking old. And ASAP Ferg is on here. ASAP Ferg kind of went for his on here. I don't know that this is the kind of thing that Nas is usually known for being on top of in terms of this track. I'm not completely all the way comfortable with the aesthetic of it, um, but they kind of do pull it off. I like it. According to my notes, I gave it an eight. So after all of that, my verdict on this Nas album, King's Disease, comes in at a 7.8. You want to round it up to an eight? That's fine. I did the mathematics. I averaged the shit out. It comes out to 7.8. I call that a successful album. Of course, I've started to notice that I need to listen to these albums two or three more times in order to get really a full reckoning of what's going on on the project. I don't like to etch this shit in stone because I listen to it at a different time, different circumstance. I might get a different vibe from it. Some of these songs that got lower scores, the scores may go up. Who knows? But salute to Nas for releasing another fantastic product. I'm not ready to call this one a classic by any means, but it's certainly a commendable comeback effort and quite enough to shut down the fucking haters in the comment section on hip hop dx you bitches once again he's my favorite of all time so i had to do this shit they tuned on this channel we got more hot interviews coming up believe that more of the mike power show where i take those variety of stories and put my own little spin on it i got a game show coming up pretty soon that y'all gonna want to check out but let's go ahead and wrap this up don't forget to hit that like because it helps the channel subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so do that right now turn on your post notifications so you know every single time i drop thank you for connecting with me now go connect with each other this is mike powers i'm out